Hi and welcome to a Calculus 1 video on using the product and quotient rules for differentiation. There are different videos that will show where these rules came from. In this video we're going to show you how to apply these rules. So the first thing that I want to mention is please do not memorize these rules. What I mean is specifically if you look over here at quotient rule, all these U's and V's, it becomes sort of almost meaningless and then if you get the U and the V in the wrong place the whole derivative is incorrect. So we'll talk about something else that um, I have learned and that most people will talk about when they know quotient rule um, and then we'll look at a generalization of the product rule. So first thing I want to mention is we're finding the derivatives in these. When I say simplify your answer that is really um, solve ready. So because we're going to eventually be doing something with these derivatives, you want to make sure that you can solve them. The other recommendation that I'll make before we get started here real quick is go ahead and try to quote unquote simplify because then you can put that answer in your system or check that answer and see if it's right. If it's not right, go ahead and put in your unsimplified answer and then you can verify whether or not your error is in your simplification or in your derivative. All right, let's start by looking at number one. Now number one, it is important to note, I do not actually have to apply the product rule here. I'm just going to use this as an example so I can start with just a product rule. But what I see is I have one blue factor times another green factor. I could absolutely just multiply these out and do a rewrite and then use power rule only. But let's go ahead and use product rule so we can learn how this works. So product rule says you're going to take the derivative one factor at a time while you leave the other factors alone. So what that means is g prime of x equals and again, because we're going to be adding all of these terms together in the end, it doesn't even matter what order in which you do it. So I'm going to take the derivative of the first factor first. So the derivative of 4x minus 7 is 4. And I'm going to leave the green factor alone. Plus, now I'm going to leave the blue factor alone. And now I'm going to take the derivative of the green factor, and that is just power rule as well. So that would be 20x to the third minus 6x plus 0. I don't have to write plus 0. Technically, this is my derivative. I could put it in. It is algorithmically equivalent to any other derivative that I might find here meaning if I had distributed everything from the beginning and just done power rule, that would be equivalent. If you would like to just practice multiplying this out and combining like terms, go ahead. And if you do that, here's where you end up. Again, those should be equivalent. Okay, let's look at another example of the product rule when you have to use product rule. So what I will tell you is that the derivative with respect to x of e to the x, for right now we're going to learn that that is e to the x. Okay, if you graph e to the x, it's a function that's always increasing um, and the slopes get steeper as the x's increase and so same with e to the x. Okay, so when I look at this, it's very important that you determine what are your factors. I don't necessarily need to see this as three factors, but I'll show you what happens if you do. I see this as one factor of 3x and another factor of e to the x. So let's just apply this product rule. So h prime of x, well the derivative of 3x is 3 and I will leave the green factor alone. Plus, now I will leave 3x alone and I will take the derivative of the green. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Again, that sort of explanation or understanding will probably come later in the chapter when you talk about natural log differentiation. This is a derivative, I will admit. This is complete. 
One thing that I would highly recommend is think about if you were going to set this equal to zero and solve it, is this solve ready? And I would argue no. I think there's some factoring that you can do, so I would go ahead and get in that routine or habit now. I'm going to factor out a 3e e to the x as my GCF, and then I have a 1 plus x left over. So this is where I'm going to actually recommend that you stop. Now, if by chance you see this as three factors, like so, we can do product rule with three factors. It still works. So what happens is, is I take the derivative one at a time, okay? So h prime of x, well, what's the derivative of this first factor? The derivative of three is zero and then you would carry down the other two factors. So there's no need really to carry down the other two factors because zero times those would be zero, but I'll leave it for now. And now the three and the e to the x are gonna stay times the derivative of the second factor, derivative of x is one, plus now the first two factors stay and I'll do the derivative of the third factor, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So I actually end up in the same place because that is all zero. All right, let's take a look at quotient rule. Now that we've done product rule, let's take a look at quotient rule. Okay, and this will be probably the last one for this video. So what I can see here is that I can't necessarily divide anything in easily there's no simplification or rewrite rather to the original that I would really consider doing at this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply quotient rule. Now what I want you to understand is my entire numerator is what we will call the high and my entire denominator is what we will consider as the low. And your quotient rule, your first derivative is low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So this can certainly be memorized for quotient rule, low d high minus high d low all over low squared. Now guess what the d stands for? You guessed it, derivative, okay? So if it just says low, that means you copy down the low. The low is x squared plus one as a factor. So low d high, so I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of the high, which is the derivative of the blue, and that would be three x squared plus three, just using power rule minus the high, so copy down that blue high, d low, so now here's where I'm taking the derivative of the low, so again, power rule would just be 2x, all over low squared, okay? This literally is your derivative. I highly recommend multiplying it out and trying to combine like terms and simplify, but this actually is the raw form of your derivative using quotient rule. One thing I will really point out here is it's imperative that you have low d high, so I have two sets of parentheses, minus high d low, so I have another two sets of parentheses, all over low squared. And so I can see that basic sort of shell every single time I write quotient rule. You really should be using a lot of parentheses here because this minus in the middle is going to get us. Okay, so let me go ahead and distribute out and combine like terms. This part is not the new calculus part, so you may want to pause the video because I'll go pretty fast here. Okay, now this is going to be what I would consider to be a great answer for my first derivative. 
in probably the most reduced or simplest form that I'm going to find. One thing to note, do you notice that I did not multiply out that denominator? It is factored. It is perfect. I can see any points of discontinuity, right? It is great. I leave that. Do not multiply out the denominator until someone tells you that you have to. There's very, very few applications or reasons in doing so when it looks like this. It's a perfect square. I leave it and I move on. The other thing is if I thought I could factor the numerator, I might. But if my first term is x to the fourth, then my middle term there should be an x squared if I want to try to reduce this denominator out. And so if I want to try to divide a factor of x squared plus 1 out, then I would really want that to look a little bit different in the numerator. It doesn't, so I believe that I am done. And this would be what I would consider to be the most reduced or simplest form for that derivative. I hope you found the beginnings of product rule and quotient rule helpful. There is another video to come. Thanks for watching.